IGN. Hello everyone, my name is Beans Brown. Today we're going to be talking about why the Doom fandom hates games journalists so much. And now, games journalists is a troubling issue for the Doom fan base, seen as they're turning people away from playing this game simply on the basis that they can't beat the game properly themselves. Now, don't take this as me going, get good scrub, but really, they do need to learn how to play the game before making a review on it. I always think that you should at least play the game two times before reviewing it, and figure out how the game's combat loop and how its systems work before going straight in and publishing your first impressions. A lot of their complaints are just nitpicks, which is really annoying, for especially for people like me who love to break down and dissect these horrible reviews. So, I do really wish people would stop nitpicking, like Connor Shaw when he said, Oh, why doesn't the demon melt when you, when you set it on fire and freeze it? That's just dumb. The engine probably can't do that. But anyway, let's get on to our first topic. I only poo poo farted for the good of humanity. Quick thing before we start, if you're new here, then consider subscribing. I make Doom content as much as I can, and I get it out quite frequently recently because, well, it's the, the holidays for me. So, if you want more Doom content, then I recommend subscribing. It's free, and you can do it anytime you want. Now, on with the rest of the video. One of the main reasons that us Doom fans hate games journalists so much is their inability to learn how the game works. These people will play the game once with, while ignoring all of the systems that are presented to them clearly, and just complain that the game is too hard, and all that kind of stuff. In my opinion, they should really play the game more than once before reviewing it, instead of rushing to get their first impressions out. The thing that annoys me with these organizations the most is the fact that they'll just rush the review out, do not put any care into it, don't even learn the game, and then get it out so they can get the first impressions out and make more money. And I understand it's a business, but I feel that the higher quality stuff will always be better, hence it's higher quality. <laughs> these people are the kinds of people who just run through with the super shotgun and then burn all of their ammo and complain that they keep running out of ammo without noticing that they have the chainsaw there, which is a necessary tool in your arsenal that you need to learn how to use and use correctly. They'll also fly through and just ignore weak points and stuff like that, and then complain when the game is too hard and they die to the Arachnatron that's halfway across the map. I feel with Doom Eternal there's always something to learn, but these people just refuse to learn how the game works in order to get those first reviews out quicker. And if you have horrible gameplay like Dean Takahashi did, then no one will listen to your complaints because you're obviously not fit to play the video game. I feel your complaints are only valid if you're even somewhat decent and you can find your way around the level. Don't take this as me being elitist, because it's not. If you cannot find your way around the level, if you cannot, if you look at the minimap, if you look at the map and you cannot figure out where to go, where it's clearly marked, then most of your complaints are invalid, especially ones about bad level design and not being able to find your way around the maps. Because Honestly, you're just being dumb at that point. You can't just shoot a hole into the surface of Mars. Another very annoying thing that these people do is constantly complain that there's only one way to play and that it's never their fault when they die because of their mistake. This is extremely annoying because as we can see from everyone in the community, there's so many different ways to play this game, not just one. They seem to think that it forces you into its systems, but doesn't every game do that? It needs to give you a reason to do what you're doing. It needs to kind of push you into its systems. A perfect analogy that Mayo made is if Super, if in Super Mario 64 all the stars were on the ground, there'd be no reason to use the double jump or the wall jump and stuff like that. Now, close your eyes for a moment and imagine a Mario 64 where every star is on the ground. Maybe not every star, but all stars needed to progress and beat the game. Enter this world and just run around picking up the stars on the ground and then move on to the next world and repeat. Would Mario 64 be considered a great game if that were the case? 
The systems would still be there. You could still triple jump and wall jump and all that cool stuff, but there would be no actual reason to use it. Most people would play the game never learning the interesting systems or seeing all the coolest areas, and they would think it was really basic and boring. And it would be pretty ridiculous to then scold those people and say, well, why aren't you exploring the world and using all the cool jumping mechanics? There's so much depth, you're choosing to play the game in a boring way. If Mario 64 were designed like that, and players came away thinking the game was pretty boring, would you blame the players for not trying to have fun? Or would you blame the game for not pushing the players into its fun systems? The challenge involved in collecting the required stars is what drives the player to engage in the game's systems and fall in love with the gameplay through experimentation, through creative problem solving, through mastery of the controls, through failure and success. Good games push you into their systems. I'm not saying there aren't exceptions, but if you think of the best games of all time, you'll find that the majority of them directly connect their gameplay systems with challenge. And there wouldn't be an excuse to just to say, well, you should do it because it's fun, because it doesn't push you into those systems. And if it was like that in Doom Eternal, then it would have been like Doom 2016 again. No hate to Doom 2016, I love that game to death. But it would have just been, shoot everything with the super shotgun and no one would get good at this game and start to learn the new mechanics and systems that it has. And the fact they always act like it's not their fault when they die is really annoying in a game where it's very, very skill based and depends on your decision making to survive and you engaging with the combat systems. And if you're not engaging with these combat systems, then of course you're going to die. That's what happens. It's a video game. It needs to be able to push you into those systems through challenge. And if it didn't do that, then there would be no point in the game. It would not be fun. And sure, there would be people who played the game who would love this game, having the freedom to do whatever you want. A lot of these games journalists come from playing games like Grand Theft Auto, Red Dead Redemption, and a lot of these open world games that really let you do what you want. And the fact that this game has a clear set of rules in it just annoys them because they can't play it however they want and they refuse to learn how it works like I explained in the last point. In my opinion, I think that Doom Eternal's way of pushing you into its systems is a very good way to teach you how the game works and how everything kind of works together. Blood Punch gives you health, Glory Gills give you health, Flame Belch gives you armor, and Chainsaw gives you ammo. It's these core fundamentals that make Doom Eternal, and if you're not using this stuff, especially weak points too, then of course you're not going to survive the game. But you can't blame that on the game, because it's your mistake for not involving yourself with the way the systems work inside said game. Going back to Under the Mayo's video, if you just played Resident Evil, ignoring all of its systems, trying to go through guns blazing with an inventory filled with ammo, and no room for healing items and stuff like that, and stuff you need for tasks, then of course you're gonna do horribly, because if you, if you get hurt, then how are you gonna heal yourself? You're gonna die. And it's the same with Doom Eternal, if you don't engage with the systems set there for you, then you're probably never going to enjoy the game, because you'll never learn how to play it properly. This guy with a shield which can only be targeted at mid-range? He's immune to the BFG, which is complete and utter horseshit. The thing that really pushed me over the edge, though, were Marauders. Marauders are an elite enemy that is just awful, and I mean really, truly awful. You have to sit there, wait for him to hopefully do his attack, and then shoot him. Ah, uh, Marauders. Everyone's favorite enemy in Doom Eternal. And my personal favorite enemy. I also made a video on him last time, so you should go and check that out. Uh, but yeah, games journalists apparently don't like this guy for whatever reason. I really don't understand it. They say he contradicts the flow of Doom Eternal. And that's a lie, actually. He covers pretty much every single thing that you need to do in Doom Eternal. Fast movement, fast killing, quick reaction time, and learning the layout of the arena. All things you have to do when fighting the Marauder. Thing is, games journalists love to complain about this enemy. They can never beat him. They, they always complain. And it never stops. We all hate it. Every time someone makes a review on this game saying it's bad, it's all about the Marauder. And we all hate it. It's very annoying, 
and we all wish they'd shut up for once. Thing is, he has a certain flow to it, and they just don't understand. They think mid-range is right up in his face, but in fact, mid-range is, is a lot further than you think. So, they really should learn that. I'd say it's about super shotgun range, which is not super close. The super shotgun can reach quite a far distance. They say he's also immune to the BFG, which is a lie. If you hit him with a super shotgun while he's faltered, fire the BFG, it kills him. Or you can fire it over his head, forcing him to turn around and let you have an easy shot on him. It's just, it's not really the complaints, it's more the false information they give you which is really the most annoying thing. It really pushes us all over the edge when we have to hear these people rant and rave about the bloody Marauder all the time. Their main complaint is always the Marauder, saying, and it's really annoying because, like I said in the first point, they cannot learn how the game works and they completely refuse to. They use the chain gun and the uh, plasma rifle and the heavy cannon to try and fight this guy, which never works. Conclusion, game journalists are dumb and you shouldn't listen to them. But if you did enjoy this video, then give it a like. It really helps me out with the algorithm and all that kind of YouTube garbage. And if you really, really enjoyed the video, then consider subscribing. It's a great way to support the channel and keep me motivated to make more videos. I also have a Discord. It's open to anyone. You can come join. We don't buy you. So, yeah, join it, I guess. But anyway, that's all for this video. So, thank you for watching and have a nice day.